within or visit New York without getting a tour of the tower. And if you were really intrepid, you might actually go to the roof. 2110, you got it coming in from building number two on the 97th floor, people trapped. Stay where you are. When the World Trade Center buildings were going up, my dad told me, when those are finished, we're going to go up on the top. My dad said these buildings will last for a thousand years. They'll be here forever. In the world trade we have the firemen in the building. They're making their way up that layer. It's 25 to 30 people. It's a terrific place to work. And on a clear day, you could see the curvature of the earth. I said, no, it's not possible. It's not possible that my life is going to end this way. Get this one. Can we break a window? Whatever you have to do to get there. Break a window, somebody! It was really... Every fiber in your body is screaming. It's like, you gotta get out of here. You gotta get out of here. <laughs> okay, let's give you a hand here. Come on, guys. We gotta sell the VIP to get down. They're all notified. Fire department, ambulance, police. They're all notified. Fire department, ambulance. You're going to be Yeah. Thanks, you saved my life. What the hell are you doing? You're trying to kill us all? Tell the boys. Tell the boys I love them. Less than two hours from this moment, both towers of the World Trade Center will be in ruins. A further three aircraft will have been hijacked and crashed, and thousands of lives changed forever. This film looks at the events at the heart of the unfolding disaster through the eyes of the people who were there and shows minute by minute what really happened inside the World Trade Center on the day America came under attack. He goes, look outside. I looked outside. I said, holy, it looks like a plane hit it or something. Billions of TV viewers around the world have grandstand views of the unfolding events. But people inside the towers know almost nothing. No, no, it's an explosion. The man who knows the Twin Towers inside out is construction manager Frank DiMartini. He was. He has overseen the rebuilding work following a bomb attack in 1993. What, above us? I don't know. I just don't know. Whatever it was, shouldn't we be getting out of here? Frank, hey, hey, do you know what happened? No idea. I'd say the building moved 10, maybe 12 feet. Uh, more like 20. What's it like out there? A lot of debris, people pretty shot. Can they clear it? Yeah, yeah. <coughs> Honey, <coughs> find somewhere less smoky. Uh, Alan's office, maybe? Now stay there till they find a way out. Mac, Pablo, and me, we're gonna check out the rest of the floor. Frank's wife, Nicole, also works at the World Trade Center as a structural inspector for an engineering firm. You think the building's all right? If the slip joint's held, yeah. Mac, yeah, get your gear. Right here. Mac? Yeah. Try to persuade him to come down. Please. Okay. A 
American Airlines Flight 11 instantly destroys six floors of the North Tower. Though all levels were designed to be smoke and fire resistant, smoke penetrates through the remaining floors to the top within a minute of the impact. Um, listen up, everybody. Everyone, listen up, everybody, please. Everyone, please, we've got to stay calm. Can you listen up? I am going to call the emergency services. They will be with us shortly, okay? This morning, in charge of the conference suites at Windows on the World is Christine Orlando. Okay, no problem. We need to check the elevators. Sir, could you do that, please? Elevators. Out there, thank you. All the phone calls Christine makes this morning to the Port Authority Police Department are recorded and transcribed. Port Authority Police Officer Mag. Yes, hi, this is Christine, Assistant GM of Windows. We're getting no direction up here. We're having a smoke condition. We have most people on the 106th floor. The 107th floor is way too smoky. We need to know where to direct our guests and our employees as soon as possible. Okay, we're doing our best, man. We got the fire department, everybody. We're trying to get up here. Uh, you know, our guests are scared. Stairways A, B, and C blocked off in smoke. Yes. Okay, here, go back in two minutes. Okay. <laughs> You're on the air yes, right yes. now. Uh, can, what can, go ahead, what can you tell us? This, Justin, you are looking at a, obviously a very disturbing live shot there. That is the World Trade Center, and we have unconfirmed reports this morning that a plane has crashed into one of the towers of the World Trade Center. Clearly, something relatively devastating happening this morning there on the south end of the island of Manhattan. Just six floors below the impact, financial trader Hong Shu and his co-workers have no idea what has happened. We just suddenly felt there was a big shake, a rumble. I say we go, I say we go now. We can't just hang around waiting for something And uh, after that uh, initial rumble, we looked around. Uh, the ceilings caved in, and uh, we didn't know what happened. Come on, kiddo. We need to get out of here. Hong's co-workers include Harry Ramos, head trader. You're not coming with us? I think we should stay here and wait for instructions. But why? It's an emergency. Somehow I remembered in 1993 there was uh, uh, an incident in uh, World Trade Center. And uh, some people died, not because of the bo a bomb, uh, but because uh, they were stepped upon uh, exiting the building. Han, the building just moved 10 feet. It's not safe. Folks, come on, gotta go. No, I'm staying. People, and good move. luck. Yeah, you too. See you at Max for lunch. Sorry, your call cannot be taken right now. Please hold the line. Within minutes of the first impact, the 911 phone system is clogged with people calling the emergency services. People from inside the towers, as well as their families and friends, are calling the Port Authority Security Command Center for instructions and information. We want you out the building, ma'am. Sir, uh, there are emergency services on their way to you. Evacuate the building. Emergency services are on their way. <laughs> Most of the people who are able to choose to evacuate the North Tower. Others choose not to. And for a very simple reason, they have been told not to. All personnel, remain at your desks. Please remain at your desks. All personnel, remain at your desks. Hi, I'm calling on the 43rd floor. What are we supposed to do? We want you out the building, ma'am. Do not use the elevator. Use the stairwells. Evacuate the building. But they're saying not to. All personnel, remain at your desks. Please remain at your desk. I'm going to put you on hold. Okay. Could you just hold the line for a sec? PA is telling them to stay where they are. What? C can we turn it off from here? No. With the 
plane's impact, oh the building's vital systems have begun to malfunction and its structure is damaged. Even 70 levels below the impact, ceilings are buckled and doors jammed. This is SCC. Hello? Hello, we need some assistance. Because of the angle of impact of Flight 11, all stairwells and elevator shafts to the upper levels are cut off. Over 1,300 people are trapped. There is no way out and no rescue plan. <coughs> Sir. <coughs> Sir, did you, did you check out the elevators? Yeah, but they're all burned out. <coughs> right. Um, we need water. <coughs> the faucets aren't working. Can you please try to find some bottled water? Water from the vases, anything? Hi, this is Christine calling from the North Tower of the World Trade Center. We need help. What is your situation? Right now we need a safe haven. Can you direct us to a certain quadrant? Hi, ma'am. I have to get on the radio as soon as possible. As soon as humanly possible. The people are asking whether they can break the windows. They can't breathe. Um, can we break the windows? No. For the moment, do not break the windows. So what do we do? Call back in two or three minutes. Oh, thanks. Great. Um, Check out the roof. The roof? Yeah, there's a service exit onto the roof. It's usually locked, but you never know. <laughs> I watched it. I seen it go live. I heard the voice. I heard the smoke. So it was a red light. Anyway, it was so long. Just going right here. Yeah, I think the way she's going. Hey, yo, they go block that whole shit. Once we turned the corner onto Canal Street, what we saw was was a nightmare. So I was looking at 20 floors of fire, which translated into 20 acres of fire. And uh, I'm thinking to myself, how are we going to deal with this? OK, come on, guys. Move it through. Watch your step. Come on. Come on. Come on, fellas. New York Fire Department crews arrive at the North Tower within minutes of the first plane hitting. Your tools down, fellas. Among them, captain of Ladder Company 6, Jay Jonas. OK, check your packs. One of the firemen from Rescue One said what we were all thinking. He came out and he said, we may not live through today. And we all looked at him and he said, you're right. And we stopped and we took the time to shake each other's hands and wish each other good luck. Not yet, guys. They've had their orders. We haven't had ours yet. But out of all those guys I was surrounded by, I'm the only one who's alive. They all perish. working, if not, find another stairwell. Is everybody cool with that? OK, let's go. These to be going to the gym, huh? <laughs> Tell me about it. While many wait in their offices and others try the long journey down, some can't go anywhere. On the way from breakfast in a staff canteen when the plane hit, a Port Authority employees, Jan Demscher okay, and Al right. Smith, we dropped a few floors, five, maybe 10. Yeah? So uh, what do we do now? For all they know, it could simply be a routine fault with their elevator. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Port Authority. We have a large explosion in the building. And finally, we a voice came over the intercom, not the recording that it normally gives. A voice came over and said, we have had a large explosion in the building. Port Authority. We have a large explosion in the building. And that was it. And there was no more. And boom, the lion of dead. Tell them to get us out of here. You're going to send someone to help us get out of here? We have some problems, I think. And we never speak again with the man on an on a intercom. When you're inside, you still like a cat in a cage. I don't have any clue what's happened outside elevator or in the building. I said, 
We have to like the children. Nobody gonna come and help us. I think we're gonna have to find our own way out. We blocked the door with some wet Kleenex, and that sucks up some of the smoke. The trap security room operators are now dealing with an emergency inside their office as well as outside. But but we still can't get out. Thanks. <coughs> Hello? Hello? Hi. This is Melanie. I'm with the conference. We're trying to get up onto the roof, but we can't. I see. Where exactly are you? I'm not sure what number the door won't open. Yeah, yeah you need a swipe card. Well, we haven't bloody got one. Well, in that case, I, I can't help you. Can you open them from down there? I'm sorry we're not able to do that from here. So what are we going to do? I'm afraid you're gonna have to find a, a way down. We've tried, but we can't. Sorry. Let's see. <coughs> Even if Melanie and the other delegates could make it onto the roof, escape is impossible. There are no official plans for helicopter evacuations. And pilots have already decided the risks of trying are too high. Hi, right. just through here. That's it, keep low. Watch your heads. That's it. All right, everything's fine. Come on, sir. Nearly there. That's it. That's it. Janet, you take him through. <coughs> Frank. Oh. Frank, are you hurt? No, 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 I'm fine. Oh, do we know what happened? No, but whatever it was, you're leaving. The stairwell's clear. Well, what about you? Aren't you coming? No, no, when I get everyone out, I'll come down. Oh, no, please, yeah, No, Frank, look, look, there are people trapped up here. I know this building. I know how to get them out. Now, I know what you're thinking. Don't. I'll be fine. Seriously. And that's where Frank would always cross the line. Mm -hmm. I mean, you would say, okay, I've done what I can do. I'm going to get out of here. And Frank just never had that point. Frank. I say we check out the tech room. Sure. Hey, hey. I'll see you in a few minutes. Huh? Come on, let's go. Just one floor above Frank is Rick Bryan, a manager at insurance company MetLife. And I'll often say it was as if a on a summer evening, sometimes every year, or maybe every other year you hear a thunderclap and the thunder rolls in like no other time with a slowly building crescendo and that's how it was on that day when that when the plane hit and i'm one step into the hallway holding the door open and i was struck by the blackness that was in front of me. It was the the deepest, the richest black that I had ever seen. Anybody there? Anybody there? And I'm thinking to myself, you know, you have the keys to the door. You can easily open the door and go back <laughs> from where you came. Hello? But can you be certain that your keys are going to work? And I was frightened. I was very frightened. So instead of continuing down the hall, I went back into our office and let the door close. If I had gone down the hallway and died, it would have been better than living with this knowledge of, hey, you know what? When it came right down to it, I was a coward and it was actually our two co-workers on the other side down that hallway that ended up dying on that day. And I often think now, perhaps I should have continued down that hallway. I wouldn't say panic, I would say uh, people was beginning to, I know I was, was beginning to get a little edgy. Uh, yeah. Uh, 
Oh, so what do we do now? I'm gonna make coal. But it's concrete. No, it's not. It's sheet rock. Hey, he's right. It's it's sheet rock. It's it's plasterboard. Windows. We have to have air. The fresh air is going down fast. I am not exaggerating. Uh, Ma'am, I know you're not exaggerating. We're getting a lot of these calls. We're sending the fire department up as soon as possible. What are we going to do for air? Ma'am, the fire department is on its way. Can we break a window? You can do whatever you have to do to get there. Break a window, somebody! Break a window! <laughs> We're not going to get out of here, you know that, no? No, help is on its way. We just have to wait. Nobody's coming. It's just us. No! Don't! will be in flames in minutes. Come on. And I saw what the hell coming down behind them outside a looked like a suit or something. A, a man's suit. And I said to myself, why would anyone do that? Who who would throw a suit out the window? What is that about? More than a hundred people jump or fall from the upper floors of the North Tower. Neither Christine nor anyone else makes any calls from Windows on the World after 9.40 a.m. We went to her apartment and that. Her uh, answering machine was just full with messages. No more could be that friends were calling her because my son took uh, listened to the whole, to the end. And that answering machine we brought home that I have it. Just 130 feet away in building two, the South Tower, the picture is confused. Some people have seen or heard the disaster which struck the North Tower. Without waiting for the picture to clear, many have taken the decision to evacuate. Given the risk of large numbers of civilians outside in the plaza blocking access for police and firemen, Announcements make it clear that the South Tower is safe. If you are in the midst of evacuation, you may use the re-entry doors and elevators to return to your office. I repeat, if Building 2 is secure, there is no need to evacuate to Building 2. It's a lot of valuable, really valuable time. Stanley Pramnath has come from his office on the 81st floor. But even as he is leaving, building staff are turning people back. Back convincing them it will be safer if they stay where they are. Had I known, had I known, had I known that this building was in fire next door and a plane had gone into this building, I would never have gone back up. I would have gone straight home. Building 2 is secure. There is no need to evacuate Building 2. I'm not sure about this, guys. We got no choice. <laughs> <laughs> With 
within short order, it became clear that we had to leave because the smoke was getting, it was getting, uh, it was, it was getting frightening. Hey, guys, this way. Follow me. The smoke was so thick and so black, and I could, could not see. And as I'm walking down the hall through this blackness, blackness, I'm thinking to myself, well, you're going to die of suffocation, of smoke inhalation. How many breaths do you need to take of smoke-filled air for, before you actually pass out? Is the time, is it measured in the number of breaths or is it measured in a number of minutes? Is there a period of time when you're breathing in smoke that you can feel yourself being overcome or does it happen instantaneously? I, I did not know. And I was annoyed at myself for not knowing. Let's try this way, huh? <laughs> oh, that's right, that's right. Yes, sir, you have... A a 2.30, followed by 4.15. In this confined area, with the door closed now, it actually seemed quite safe. Well, I'll see what I can do, but we're having a bit of problems with the phone. Why? When they came in, I was surprised that they were there. Well, we have a situation here. What kind of situation? And then I was even more surprised that they had just come out of a office that was on fire. I'm sorry, do you have a fire extinguisher? Uh, on the wall above the cupboard. Oh, thanks. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, I can't do that right now, sir. No. no. You don't seem to understand. There's a lot going on around here right now. Thanks. Yes, sir. I'll do it first thing tomorrow morning, sir. I said to myself, look, you, you have to do something. <laughs> Within two seconds, I realized what a ridiculous task I was trying to accomplish. I was trying to put out this inferno with this stream of fluid that couldn't have been more than a quarter of an inch wide. My heart went into my throat from my chest. And at that point, I knew we were in trouble. <laughs> Harry Ramos has reached the main elevator hallway on the 78th floor. Where 
as nearly everyone in the building is heading down, three civilians are heading up. Frank Demartini, Pablo Ortiz, and Mac Hanna. This way, down there. I gotta call my sister. Sure. Good morning, CDM. Diane speaking. Yeah, Diana, it's Frank. Is Nina there? No, Frank. Now, I need you to get a message to her. Sure. There's, uh, there's been another explosion at the World Trade Center. I need you to find her right away and tell her that me and Nicole are fine. I don't want to hear about it on the radio. Well, sure, of course. What about you? Are you okay? Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. Listen, I gotta go. Thanks, Diana. This way, Dad. Hey, let's keep moving, huh? This way. Come on, right through here. That's it. Keep going. Shortly after 9 a.m., Jay Jonas, captain of Level 6, is receiving his orders to go up the North Tower. He, he just closed his eyes and he shook his, shook his head and he says, just take your guys upstairs and do the best you can. And out of the corner of my eye, I saw a, a big black shadow on the ground. And uh, a man came running in from the outside and said, uh, a plane just crashed, a plane just crashed into the World Trade Center. United Airlines Flight 175 bound for Los Angeles hits Building 2, the South Tower, at 9.03 a.m., less than 17 minutes after Building 1 was hit. No, 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 we still don't know. One man who gets an extraordinary view of the impact is Stanley Brennan. He has just returned to his office from the ground floor lobby. Yeah, I guess. Um, so, I'm standing up with the phone in my hand. But we're, we're fine. My coffee and bagel that I bought when I was coming up still yeah, sits there on the desk. And I'm looking towards the Statue of Liberty, the direction of, with the phone in my hand. And that's when the plane caught my eyes. And this plane is bearing down on me. I level eye contact. I'm hypnotized standing up there. I'm not having time to react. Or I'm looking at this plane, and it's getting bigger, bigger, bigger. Lord, I can't do this, you take over. And I dove under my desk. What's Southern the hell was that? Holy That apparently does look like it is in the other building at this point. That's terrible. Right, this is 16. I just saw the corner hung up, but he said a new explosion just happened at two World Trade Center at, on the 80th floor. Oh. The plane hits the South Tower between the 77th and the 85th floors. Because the plane struck at an angle, one staircase to these floors is for a short while, possible. And there is another extraordinary piece of luck. The strange thing, the bizarre thing is, the phone starts to ring. I don't know who is trying to dial me, but the phone is ringing. And I'm saying to myself, I got to be dreaming. This is not real. In the real world, the plane crashes, you die. This is not real. I got to be dreaming. I live. Help! Help! Some offices on the impact floors are spared the devastation of a fireball. One of them is the office of Brian Clark. Oh. The sensation was <coughs> that our whole building moved to the Hudson River and kept moving a distance of six to eight feet. I know that sounds preposterous, and whether it did move six to eight feet, I don't know, but that was the sensation. And I had this terrifying thought that we're going over. We went okay. <laughs> In a split second, our room just absolutely disintegrated. It was as if a, a demolition crew had been given all the right equipment, sledgehammers and crowbars, go through and destroy this space and you've got a whole day to do it. 
but it happened in an, in an instant. Okay, listen up. <coughs> There's a good chance of fire. We have to exit this building as soon as possible. No time to get your stuff. Just follow me. I understand, but trust me, we have to get out of the building, and the only way out is down. I say we go back up. Yeah, me too. I don't know when. Look, I say we keep going, check it out. See if we can't find a different way down. Look, it's bad upstairs, but it's not going to get any better. But what if we can't find a way out? Well, then we'll just have to see. What about the roof? No way. Help! It's wrong. Help! What was that? Come on, let's go, let's go. Yeah. I heard this noise inside the 81st floor, this sort of banging, and this voice screaming for help. Help, help, I'm buried. Is anybody there? I can't breathe. And I said, come on, Ron, we've got to get this guy. Is there anybody in here? As I went through the gap sideways, I saw the rest of the group on the stairwell, and they all went up, and they all died that day. Let's round everyone up, check they're okay, see who's missing. Uh, I'll call emergency services again. Elaine Gentle is Director of Human Resources at Private Bankers yes? Fiduciary Trust. Look, check outside to see if you can find Yeah, yeah, okay, out. I'm on it. One of the first calls she makes is to her husband, Jack. Elaine? Yeah, me. First thing I said was, thank God you're all right. And she said, well, not really. I said, well, what do you well, mean? Well, I don't know. I heard some sort of explosion below us. I don't know what it was. And I said, well, it doesn't make sense because the plane hit the other building. It didn't hit your building. She said, well, there was some kind of explosion beneath us. I don't know what And it was. I didn't know what to make of that. And she now? said, um, well. We're trying to figure out what we should be doing. Yeah. It's getting really hot in here, and smoke coming out of the vents she didn't know whether they should stay or leave and she didn't know what to do about the situation that was growing worse Elaine huh? it doesn't look good I had no idea that there was a plane that hit her building she had no idea that a plane hit that building I'm screaming, Lord, I don't want to die. Please send somebody, anybody to help me. And as I'm screaming, I realize I'm temporarily deaf. I couldn't hear. I can't stand the smoke. I, I got to go. Hey, look, you go back and join the others. It's okay. Hello? Hello? Is there anybody in here? And I crawled the entire length of the loans department through the lounge, into the computer room, into the communication room, and that's the farthest I could have gotten. Because one lousy sheet rock wall stood firm, blocking my path. Hello? 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 Hey, is someone there? Yeah. I can't see you. Keep going. What? I, I can't see you. I turned my flashlight toward the, the voice. Yeah. Yeah, I got you. What I remember asking him was, what is your name? He said, Brian Clark. What are the chances for you to have a flashlight? He said, yeah, I'm a fire down warden. A down to your left. But I suddenly heard this yeah. person yeah. With this, this yeah. saying, can you see my hand? Can you see my hand? Yeah. 
Here, can you see my hand? Can, can you see my hand? Which floor? Is that hooked up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I got okay, guys, here's the deal. It's a raw one. We have to go to the upper floors for search and rescue. The only thing is we can't use the elevator, so we're going to take stairwell B. Ten floors at a time. Ten floors, quick rest, ten more. I told them, I says, they're trying to kill us, boys. Says, Let's go to work. Okay. And to their credit, every Let's one go. of them, they, they looked at me and says, okay, Cap, we're with you. There was thousands of people upstairs that needed our help, and that's where we had to go. As Jay Jonas is beginning his journey up the tower, many others are coming down. There are over 200 flights of stairs in each tower. To get out of the building by foot takes over 50 minutes. But that's what most of those inside the North Tower are still trying to do. And for some, that is not so easy. One of those who is unable to get out on his own is Victor Wald. Now, he made it from the 83rd floor down to the 59th floor. So he made it down over 25 flights. Sir? Do you need a hand? I just think probably he just became more frightened. Sometimes you just become, you know, you can't move your legs anymore. I'll send someone back up to find you. I'll just hold you back. Go on. Uh, no, Victor, you stay. I stay. I don't know why he was drawn to Victor. I have no idea why. You guys don't need to hang around. Why don't you take off? I'll meet you downstairs when we get there. They had no connection. They didn't know each other at all. You know, they just could have walked by him like a lot of people would have done. You got any kids? Yeah, two daughters. Why? How old are they? Uh, nine and 13. Mm -hmm. The oldest just had a bat mitzvah. Don't you think she want to know that you're safe? Maybe. Yeah. What's her name? Alexandra. I'll tell you what. Why don't we get you out of here and then you can get home and tell Alexandra and your other daughter that you're okay. That was when I saw Harry was helping a gentleman uh, who I did not know, and uh, quite slowly. Hey, you decided to take the day off after all. Hong, this is Victor. Victor, this is Hong. We're gonna help him get out of here. I'll tell you what, guys, I really could use a beer. Hey, guys, wait up. Yeah. Okay, guys, let's take a rest here. Drink some water. We're at war with somebody. I don't know who we're at war with, but we're at war with somebody. Check your packs. We leave again in two. Not only the United States is a target, but you know, right where I'm standing is, is a major target. Now, is there going to be a third plane? Is there going to be a fourth plane? We didn't know. What the hell is it going to be like up there? Guys, you ready? OK, let's go. On the 81st floor of Building 2, the South Tower, Brian Clark and Stanley Pramnath are still divided by a mounting of debris. You're gonna have to climb over the top. I'm not sure I can do that. Well, you're gonna have to. 
I said, the only way out of here is you to go over this. Okay. You must do this. And I climbed up on some stuff and kind of looked down at him. He scrambled up like a cat, and I tried to... He fell down once. I said, you must do this. And this person behind this wall is telling me if I want to live, I must climb over. He says, you jump on the other side, I'll catch you. He said, hallelujah, I've been saved, which was, sort of took me back. This man really thought I was crazy. And I don't know how to thank a man who just saved my life. I reached down, I hugged this man, and I gave him a kiss. And he gave me this great big kiss. And this man says, whoa, 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 what are you doing? He says, Brian Clark. And he said, uh, I'm Stanley, we'll be brothers for life. I said, well, that's great, as we started to dust ourselves off. I said, uh, oh, that works for me. I never had a brother, and now I do. <laughs> hey, you okay? Your hand, it looks nasty. Hey. What about you? <laughs> this can't be real. I can't believe we're alive. <laughs> well, let's keep it that way. Okay. Uh, up or down? down. You lead the way. You're the lifesaver around here. And this man put his hand around my shoulder and he says, come on, buddy, let's go home. And the first time in my life, I cried like a baby. Because nobody never showed me that kind of compassion in my life before. A total stranger. Calling up from her at 100 World Road Trade Center. 100. She was able to speak? Just, um, barely.